Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to Papua New Guinea. We're here in Candrian today, just making a short hop over to Moak. So let's go ahead and get started. It's just a 20 minute flight. Go low, start, get our ITT down below 200 before I introduce my fuel. Otherwise there's kind of a big loud pop in the engine because there's some residual, um, I guess it, it lights off before it should is what basically it does. Right. Generator on, our V2, our prop forward. Let our amps pop back down before I throw my alternator on and my aux bus. TAWS system test, okay. But anyways, yeah, um, it's just a 20 minute flight and about something like that over to um, Moak. It's not that far over there. And uh, hopefully the grass is cut there. I went there on Monday last week and there was one section that was not cut. So I told them last time, hey, if it's not done by this weekend, then I won't be able to land next time. So hopefully, hopefully it's done. Orange B6622, November Tango Echo Taxi. November Tango Echo, go ahead. November Tango Echo Taxi, Cadrian. Moke, seven, correction, six POB. Seven POB. Correction, seven POB, November Tango Echo. Number Tango Echo, copy, seven POB, for the destination. Confirm destination, Moke, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, copy. Station is Candrian, Kodiak number Tango Echo, taxiing Candrian for Moak. Will be below 5,000. Uh, so it's just 40 miles over to Candrian, or correction, over to Moak. Let's just throw all of our lights on, taxi up to the top of the runway. This runway is super, super long and about a 3% slope downhill. Really nice and smooth. It's made uh, a lot of coral and stuff. And then the airstrip that we're heading out to is uh, just a grass runway, kind of tucked away in the jungle. The ocean is just right over there, just a few hundred yards away, and we're about 300 feet up. So yeah, nice view out of the over, over the ocean out that way. One of these times I'll throw the drone up for you guys while we're here, but I don't have time today. So here we are in West New Britain today. It's just an island off of the main island of PNG. We're here in Candrian and we are heading up to Moak, somewhere up in there. Like I said, it's not that far, just 40 miles. Our direct controls are all good. Our TAWS is enabled. Turn Betty off for takeoff. No hurry yelling at us. Control system and TAWS. Um, our weight today. Weight today is going to be 515 kg, so what we're going to put in here is the packs. That's 1136. Put in 1140. It comes up to 6460 on that, and this is 6440, so we'll pop it down one. There we go. Apps are set, indicated, and verified at 20. Trim and abort. Um, if I'm not 35 knots by the taxiway, probably 40, let's say 40 knots by the taxiway on the left with the yellow cones, we'll just stop on the runway, full reverse, heavy braking, going off, we'll just continue to go straight ahead for now. After takeoff, pitch for 85, we're going to consider EPL emergency power lever right away. Otherwise, cut off, or feather it, cut off, pull off, and shut off. We'll make a left hand turn down towards lower terrain, down towards the coast. Go 80 full flaps, emergencies, masters, and crack my door in case my fuselage bends when we hit the ground. Igniters, inlet, and light are good. Our taxi is done. We are more or less sea level, 31 degrees, 15 at 90, so 15, 40. And if you're wondering why I'm doing 50 below what it actually says, it's because I'm in bypass. And that's why. 
Ignition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses. And I forgot to get my VRF, 6500. So let's rotate at 60 and come back in at 70 if we had to, which we will emoke. All right, checklist is complete. Ignition condition flaps 20 fuel and harnesses. 40. We're just going to do a rolling start so I don't pick up any rocks. Alright, torque is set. Air speed's alive. There's 40 continuing. There's 60. How about a 10 knot tailwind now, which is interesting because I had a eight knot tailwind on landing, and I landed the other way. So, yeah, figure that one out. But we're not gonna be able to go all the way up to 5,000 today, just because uh, I think the clouds are right around 3,500 to 4,000, so we'll just head up to that high and just melt our way over there. Anyways, I'm keeping it uh, pitching for 85 knots on my climb out with my ITT at 740. That's the top of the green. That's the maximum power that I can have, like continuous power, not the maximum power, continuous power for five minutes. All right, we'll just stay at 2,000 feet today, it looks like. The clouds look like they go down up here anyway, so I'm going to bring my torque on back and actually fly with my fuel flow just at 320 on this short little flight because we're below 5,000 feet. MSL, we just limit ourselves to 320 pounds per hour just so we're not wasting fuel and our, our indicated airspeed is still the same. And yeah, our ground speed and our true airspeed is a little bit slower, but that really doesn't matter. All right, let's throw our landing light off, engine inlet back to normal, and our igniters are turned off. We'll just stay at 2,000 feet today. And let's call up Moresby for our departure call. Moresby 6622, November, Tango, Echo, departure. Lumbar, Tango, Echo, Moresby, go ahead. November, Tango, Echo, departed Kandarian, time 18, tracking 308, below 5000, estimating Moak. Time three four and copy company traffic November Tango Hotel. November Tango Echo below five thousand. So we are heading over to Moak. It is five hundred and sixty-five meters long and elevation is just a thousand foot. So our pattern altitude would be at two thousand, which is what we already are at, which would be great. We'll be landing on runway 34. It's just a one-way airstrip. It kind of goes into the jungle and yeah, and then it's pretty much flat for the most part. I think it's like a, a three or 4% slope. And then kind of at the very end of it, it's more or less flat, but then at the very end of it, it kind of jumps up another like 30 or 40 feet, kind of at the very end. Anyways, uh, nothing to, yeah, the touchdown slope here says 2%. So yeah, more or less flat not a full load, so I'm expecting to have tailwinds on landing today. Oak is cut except the bottom 60 meters, but it's cut past the point you touched down on Monday. That makes me believe that they didn't cut it. All right, so we're going to get there in just nine minutes. Hopefully he can give me a call to explain a, a little bit more on what, he's ex what he meant by that. All right, looks like I might be able to just stay at 1,700 feet just underneath of these clouds, which gives me, yeah, yeah, probably 1,000 to 1,200 feet above the ground, probably. November Tango Hotel, 127.1, November Tango Echo. November Tango Hotel, November Tango Echo. Try them on, uh... Ah, uh, good enough. Well, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly over the field and buzz the airship going this way just to see. So my thought process is if they didn't cut it for the first 60 meters, now my airstrip is just shortened down quite a bit. So it would be 500 meters if it's actually 60 meters. But also you have to think of is because now you're 60 meters in, sometimes you can't quite land it right, right out that. So now you're looking at more like 400 uh, not 450, yeah, probably 450 meters, or in, in between there, 475 meters by the time you actually touch down, which is still more than enough space to stop. It's probably pretty dry out here. Uh, I landed again like a, a week ago, and the rest of it was fine, but um, it's pretty disappointing if they didn't cut it because they said they were 100% for sure going to cut it. It was only like 60 meters worth of grass that they actually needed to finish up cutting, but it was four feet high. And yeah, like I've said before, dogs and pigs and things like that can hide in it and run out at the last second. And once I'm that low, I can't go around. Like the trees and the terrain rise up too much where I just can't safely make an easy get out of there. So if they did not cut that, then I'm more inclined just to head back to Hoskins. And unfortunately, my passengers will have to find another way to get out here because it's just not worth damaging the aircraft or injuring any of us, if that were the case. Or for some reason, if I were to land before that, for some reason. Uh, coming in here with potentially an eight to 10 knot tailwind already, that's already pushing me into the hill. And then I have to land even further on in than I was wanting to. And with another 550 kgs of cargo on board, I don't know. It just kind of adds up on top of itself, on top of itself, and then just gives you so many more options to, uh, yeah, have an incident. All stations remote, 127 decimal one, Kodiak November Tango Echo, uh, one to zero miles to the east, southeast, below 2000, circuit time, MOAC 3-4. All right, let's go ahead and start up our checklist for landing, our selectors, our fuel selectors, and our brakes are good, our taws. We'll turn Betty off. Our V-Ref, which will be our landing speed. Uh, it's gonna be 69 knots. We're just 6,300 pounds. Our lights and our inlet, we can throw our lights on, our, and we're below 140 knots, so we can also do our inlet now. If we do need to go around, it's power up 20 degrees. Pitch for 73 knots, which is the best angle of climb. We'll make a left-hand turnout, reset our torque to 740. The prop and harness will do here shortly. We're just three minutes out now. I'm gonna basically fly like a left downwind and then come around and basically just buzz the strip the other way to see. Station Hoskins on 1271, Papa, miles, GPS. Uh, to the west of Hoskins, one minute thousand, and uh, commencing descent is very Hoskins, second at um, uh, uh, four, four, all stations Hoskins on one seven one. All right, let's OBS it, runway three four, that way I can know exactly the direction orientation of the airstrip. I'm going to enter into like a left That's right. and uh, come back around. Buzz the airstrip so I can take a look at this morning. Uh, we got, um, sorry, could we go company? Thanks. All right, so my other option is to head over to Llama Guy, which is just over here, like nine minutes away. I know I can come there and land, and the helicopter can maybe come over there and pick him up if I cannot land here. Because if they didn't cut it, I told them I wasn't going to land, so I'm not going to land. That's the story of my life, flying here, trying to get people to cut the grass. It's such a pain, absolutely such a pain. All right, that still works. I still have enough fuel with my reserve to be able to get all the way back to Hoskins and still have my hour reserve by the time I get there. Where's me, 6622, November, Tango, Echo. Morsby 6622, November, Tango Echo. Station calling Morsby 6622. Morsby 6622, November, Tango Echo. In the circuit, Moke, report after landing. 
All stations on Moke, 127 S11, November Tango Echo is in the circuit, Moke. All right, well, up and harness is done. Our SAR will do here shortly. We're below 138 knots. We'll go 10 degrees of flaps. Up here, it does not, uh, can't really tell. It looks like they might have cut where I asked them to cut, but the very, very end of it is not cut. But it, the middle, that was the issue. It looks like it might be cut. So that's potentially good. I think. I can't tell from here. I'm still a mile out. So we're almost a mile out. All right, I've got 20 degrees of flaps. We'll just do 20 degrees of flaps and fly down the airstrip at 80 knots, about 20 feet above the runway. And then we'll do a teardrop and come right back and land if it is good. 500. Hard to get down because we've got palm trees and coconut trees that are about 60 feet tall at this end of the runway, and then the runway drops off, going down the hill. I can't really get down in there very well. Okay, it does look like they've cut what I've asked them to. Okay, yes, they did cut it. They just didn't cut the very, very, very last part, but they've cut what I told them to cut. That's good. All right, so let's do a teardrop and then come right back in. Just keep our 20 degrees of flaps in. We'll do 10 degrees or 35 in a second. I'm gonna turn funnel 1,500 feet. So I'm just gonna go up to 1,500 feet and then turn right back around. There's 1,400 feet. I'm not exactly sure how far I am out because I have these ones in there. I have two other places in there because I was thinking I might have to go on. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my turn now. Full flaps checklist is complete. Go 180. It's slowing down to 69 knots. There we go. Now I can see it. That's 79 here for base. I don't really want to lose much altitude because I'm already at my 500 feet. We've got 79 knots indicated. 500. Our full flaps check is che the checklist is complete. <laughs> Can't talk today. And slowing down to 69 knots. I'll see how much tailwind we actually have. Three knots so far. direct tailwind, five knots off kind of the quarter tailwind, and slow into 69 knots. I'm just pitching for my airspeed and power for altitude. We're trying to get down to 69, now we've got five knots of tailwind. Up on committed. And okay, we're committed. Like grass clumps that are making me jump, <laughs> jump the airplane. Anyways, guys, this is Moke. I'm super glad they actually got this thing cut. And it's slippery. Slopping all over the place, it feels like. My tire's stuck on that side. Anyways, 
Hey, if you guys want to try that same flight on uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator or whatever else, I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon page. I'll post this exact same flight so you guys can try this out with all the details that, you know, weather and whatnot for today, as well as some strip charts that you guys can use. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I do appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy this. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, this is the kind of content you guys like watching as well. So, again, thank you, and let's go ahead and shut down. All right, get our fuel, 540. Get point nine. All right, shut up, I'm gonna throw our blowers off, all of our lights off. Box bus, generator, alternator, idle, cut off. And then let my ITT come on down. About 200 and also turn off my auxiliary fuel pump. All right, guys, thanks again. Have a good one.